Hello, up on onwards hit now. In recent videos I've seen online, Loco review was I've seen quite a handful of uh, the new Rapido J70 tram. And since, well, I got a Silver Fox resin model, as we see here, I figure as a bit of uh, respect to that model, I might as well do a bit of conversion or painting, I should say. Because I've actually been getting a few comments on these two carriages I have, which are old Triang four wheel European design coaches. And apparently, these are very hard to get these days. Uh, yeah. But they look very good, and they ve look very much like the type from the old Upwell and, uh, Up well and Wells Beach Tramway. Now, I got, I was able to get hold of a third one, uh, got it for nothing. And as you can see, the roof needs repair on it. About a good quart chunk of it's off, so that'll be fun to fix. Now, I've actually already started work on this one, uh, actually. So it can run on my micro layout, I've worked the couplers. So, no, only the loop at this end, the hooks at this end. All I had to do was uh, drill out and the rivet and fit a couple on. And what I did with the original couplet was fit it on this one. Now, these two already painted out inside and out they got they've been given added weight that's that but we're gonna be working on this one it's untouched really but in preparation for the video i've done a bit of odds in it and uh first things first is the interior now this is going to be a bit of a first because usually i use homebrew enamel paints to paint the interior but I figure for the inside of the walls anyway of this coach body we're going to use acrylic now I actually uh, painted out a little sample on this bit of foam now the green it does look nice and it would bring out the color that I plan on painting the seats but that blue does look very nice. And just to point out the colour I'm planning on painting the seats, it's this enamel red, enamel plain, uh, homebrew enamel, gloss 19 red. And I'm just having a look at it compared to what spill along the side here of the paint pot. I'm just having a look at it compared to the colours here. Now the blue looks like a dark version of the guarded blue of the LNER. And the green, uh, let's not dwell onto that matter. Now, I figure, yeah, the blue might be a more subtle approach. So, there's the coach body. Gonna need a jar of water as humble acrylics are water based and like a melon I made sure to put the jar lid on tight oh blimey 
Uh, <laughs> I might actually have to go grab myself a jar opener for this, otherwise I look pathetic. <laughs> uh, one more try, though. One more try. <laughs> then I'm grabbing the jar opener, because this is too funny. There we go. That's the jar opened. Ooh. <laughs> Now, just to select the right brush, because it's going to be the interior, I want to be able to get in the corners, so I can't be too silly. Uh, and, well, when it comes to acrylic paint, choosing the right brush does come into a strong factor. Yeah, that won't do. Now, what I have here is a nice old wood style brush, which originally had a plastic sleeve around here. And dratted autofocus, I swear to heaven, that is annoying, well it's about as annoying as when my computer goes off when I forget to turn the sound off. Whoops. None the wiser, got my paint. Got the acrylic, uh, yeah acrylic paint. And uh, it's actually gonna take me a bit, fair bit of time to paint the inside. So, what I'm going to do is pause the video, right here, and just time-lapse video it. Because it makes sense. It'll take me a good bit of time to paint the inside and make sure no paint gets, it protrudes on the out. So, yeah. Uh, back in a bit, then. Okay, we're back. And the look. The enamel coat, no, not enamel, the acrylic paint has had time to dry. At least I hope it has. Because, well, it's water based, it does dry quick. That's what I like about them. Now, we're going to add the color for the roof. Now, for that, I'm using this uh, Metal Flake 12 enamel copper color. And, uh, yeah, should be good. I already gave it a good stern shake up, so should be nice and flaky. Now, before I even start painting, um, I've got a bit of a history of, well, getting really, getting my hands dirty with enamel paint, and it's extremely annoying to wash off. Even if I paint my hands with the thinners, I still end up with enamel on me. That is a bright pain of backside to get rid of. So, as a precautionary, and also so I don't get my the oil off my hands to ruin a good paint job, put on a pair of gloves. Now, it seems a bit excessive, well, just a tad really, but. There's what has to be done for a good look. Plus, well, no one wants fingerprints on a good paint job. Now do they? Now I'll just grab me brush. Now for the, this job, I've got a jar of thinners here. Uh, not to be staking with the water jar. Differences, different color lids. White for water, dark for Thinners. Now, same brush, but it's had a good clean. There's no trace of the acrylic stuff on it. So, just give it a good stir in there to pick up some of the flake along with the paint. And we'll begin. Now, the practice I found out with these uh, coach roofs. Especially if you're working on the interior. And if you're using these uh, flake, these metallic flake paints. It's the work from the outside in. Because while you wait for it to dry, that flake is going to pull in the center. Now, normally, 
if you work from the outside and you do it in a perimeter. I just do it with uh, dividing lines, as it were. Because if you do it perimeter, it's still going to pull in the middle. Which uh, greatly annoys me half the time. You know, I think this might be another t time lapse process. Yeah, since I remember how slow the middle flake works, it would be a smart idea. Right, now, it's kind of like BRM's uh, videos with Tony Wright, really, but because it started yesterday and we're continuing on with the project today. Now, back to the main point. I have finally got the plastic fitted on an, as the canopy. It's a bit rough, but a bit of filing will smooth that out. Got this half round file. Now, not only will this get rid of the burrs from the poor glue work, also kind of preps it for paint. And as if in every form of fine work, it's the human touch that does it now. Because there's a bit of a burr left from the cut. There we go. Just a craft knife to help shape it. Now, this is how it looks now. And I did the other end just to uniform it up a bit. On the inside, we got it painted. Nice blue and copper mix. And for the wheel set, well, I'm going to leave the plastic wheels on, but as you can see, I've already added the lead weight. Now we're going to paint over that in a bit. Put that aside for now. For this, just grab a bit of masking tape and we're going to cover the windows. The method to this madness is really simple. Saves me having to repaint a lot. So I just add the tape to the inside. Okay, back in a bit, and when I return, this will be masked up, ready for paint roof first. Well, when I say we, I mean me. Now, where did I put it? For the roof, I'm going to use this nice metallic silver. It's a good paint. Trouble is getting the right brush to go with it. There we go. What a nice, smooth, soft brush. But I think I'll use the same one from yesterday for the painting of the roof because there's a bit of intricate bits here and there. I'll save this brush for when we do the body. Now the lighting's a bit off because, well, it's daylight. And it doesn't really make much difference in the light switch. Anyway, why switch on a light when we got natural sunlight with us? I'll just move that out of the way, put the thinners there, so we can see this a bit better. And since I forgot to mix this, uh, pretty much be... Alright, now the paint's shaking up. Now, just as a precautionary, as what happened uh, last night while painting the inside of the roof, I accidentally put my thumb in it and ruined the paint job. Just in case that happens again, put on some gloves. Now, I don't mind doing acrylic paint without gloves because that's easy to brush off with some water. But enamel, it's oil-based, which I think, which is why you need thinners. 
to get rid of it. And believe me, if you get on your clothes, it is a well, it is not a pretty job to get rid of. And trust me, it is really bad. All right. Now, this is paint's been well shook up. Using what's on the lid first, uh, I'll just. Actually, now I finger it while we got this nice silver metallic out. I just grabbed the bogey, well, chassis of the coach and just paint the buffers real quick. Nice, simple job. Easy and lucrative. Quite simple, handsomely done. And just put that aside to dry. Now for the main reason we're painting, the roof. Now this I'll just get the outline of the original coach body first. Mainly because uh, I don't exactly know the technical term for this beading along the coach but roof but uh, I like to keep that detail in it it looks good uh, just to clarify I do all my painting freehand no air gun no stencil or anything like that. Bit of masking tape so I don't, you know, muck it up too much. But yeah, that's about it. Actually, now I think of it, this is the first time I'm actually using masking tape. I forgot how tedious this is because it's been about shoot about five seven months since I last had to paint a coach. But as soon as I get the main idea of this so painted, like so, I'm gonna switch. Over to hi Ah, oh, god damn jazz stuck again. Huh. Gonna get this thing on hyperlapse so that way it ain't like Okay, that's the roof done. Now I may or may not add another layer once that stuff's dry. Oops. Yeah, thought I nicked it with my finger. Oh, wrong. And yeah, there's a good reason why I wear gloves. I uh, accidentally caught the lid of the jar on my hand. Oh well, neat trick. I wouldn't have to put the lid back on. Means I don't actually have to worry about putting the lid on. So it's on. Then, yeah, done dust. Take the gloves off. Now, while that dries, let's have a look at the body here. Because at the moment, there's nothing. It's just a plain black, well, yeah, plain black plastic, really. And it's quite dull and boring. Now, if I grab one of my uh, already done cars here, and I open that up, 
we see painted seats and painted floors. Quite good. Now, normally for the wood, I would use this nice Maps 29 Brown. But for the seats, instead of going for the nice light green that sticks out quite boldly, um, I'm actually thinking of going for something different. Uh, it's in here somewhere. I hear this. I figure go for this nice acrylic green. It's a bit of an arm, army green, I think. Well, I know uh, RC405 is pretty army green-ish. But RC10, it reminds me a lot of the old wooden coaches uh, used here in New Zealand. As the South Island coach colour is a nice deep green. While North Island is, well, nice bright red. Now, I figure the way it looks, red won't stick out that much. Because it's a red base, it's a red base. So red and red, no, red and green sticks out like a sore thumb. And you want to see that. Now, since I've just used this for acrylic, can't really use it now. Uh, not acrylic, enamel. So I can't use it at the moment. So, I have to dive into the box of brushes and paint. And grab something a little more suitable. Nah, not enough. I'll just use this. Now, again, mixing the paint's going to be tedious, but I figure I'll do the seats first, then the floor. So, back in a bit, because I've got to mask it up. Okay, paint's all shaken up now. I had to switch from the Matte's 29 wood brown to this uh, sort of clay brown colour, because the contents of this paint pen paint tint are all solidified. It's uh, solid in there. Even the finish don't work. So that's something I have to buy next time I'm up at the mall shop. Bugger. But got made a wee chat a while back showing the difference in the colour. Bit of a tone difference, ain't there? Uh, gonna hyperlapse this because again time can Right, that's the floor and seats painted up, as well as the roof of the coach. I'm going to leave those to dry for now. Uh, when we get back, I'll get to work on the coach body. Mainly getting that nice, lovely red paint, which does take multiple layers, I might add. Right, now it's another new morning. Perhaps we're three days in this now, so this should be good. Now, I've uh, truck passing. <laughs> Now, I've actually painted about half of the body already. See, and we see how that nice deep red looks. Looks pretty nice to me. Now, I'm going to continue painting it, but before I start, I uh, do the main body film. Fill in that. I actually have to, without a choice, fill in small areas. There's a little bit here I missed in the corner and such but also when it comes to painting this side I really have to be careful where I paint because along here I don't want to mix this nice deep red with the silver along the window frames I eh, gotta be somewhat careful to a certain level but around here definitely around here because I got nothing really to prevent me overlapping. So just a nice simple motion really for that. Then it's on to painting these little pegs. Then letting the damn stuff dry really. And sorry if I use profanity now but 
It's just been one of those days, ladies and gents, boys and girls. Now, should be quick and easy to stir up the paint. And next time you see this, it will be fully painted. So, back in a bit. Right, that's the body fully painted now. Now, we're just going to leave this to dry for a bit. Well, I'd say, let's see, it's about noon now, so I'll probably get back to it in a few hours. Then, hopefully, the paint will have fully cured. Uh, yeah. Oh, apparently it says here's six hour drying this time. Bugger that. But to give an, a, a view of how I look, Here's one, here's a body from an already done coach, and here's the chassis from, well, bogey, frame, whatever, from the one we just worked on. Supposed to look something like that. And I think that's as good as representation as you can get, really. Now, I'm not going to do glazing on it on the coach because I've done it to this one and in all fairness I've seen better glazing on really old Hornby models it's my job my well attempt at glazing is uh, pathetic at best so once that paint dries I'll put pull the tape off and we'll have a finished product. See you all at the final reveal because, uh, yeah, it's going to be a fair while for that. And here we go, the finished product. After about two, three days work. And just to prove this is not a stitch up and just one of my other painted coaches. From the oldest to the youngest of the trio. I think it's pretty good work. Well, thank you very much. This is Upwell and I would say thank you.